Talking about artificial intelligence, I have with me on today's webcast Olu Shola Amoson, is the founder of Coven Works, and they're doing amazing work in Africa when it comes to data science and artificial intelligence. I like to steal one of his lines. He says, um, "Artificial intelligence is one of the opportunities, if not the last, that Africa has to catch up with the rest of the world." He will be talking about AI and how you can tap into this technology either as a creator or just as that entrepreneur that you are or that career person so you wouldn't be left out of this um, face of automation because there is this fear all over saying that robots are going to replace us artificial intelligence is going to wipe out humans i mean we should not be afraid of the super intelligent ai like he says um Olushola, over to you Thank you so much. I mean, it's, it's great to be on this webcast. A lot of people, thousands of them, learning uh, remotely everywhere around the world. And this is the power of digital. But what we are saying to people is when you understand and accept the value of digital, move on to what's the next thing, right? Yeah. I'm an artificial intelligence proponent, and I'm always telling people about the digital economy. Uh, one of the strongest you know, epiphanies I had recently is that this is the last frontier for Africa. This represents the last chance for Africa to actually take its place under the sun. You know, like in the words of the Singaporean Prime Minister, we need to secure our place under the sun. And one of the key ways to do it is to learn about what are the advance, what actually is artificial intelligence and how can it help our work? How can it help our businesses and how can it provide more jobs? How can you transform healthcare? And that is really what we should be focusing on. So I'm excited to be here. And um, the first thing I want to say is that enough Africans, there are over 900 million people on this continent. People who have the same brain. You know, talent is evenly distributed. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Brilliance is equal. I mean, it's just, it's just the opportunity. It's just giving people the opportunity to get on you know, to, to nurture their talent into brilliance, you know, which basically applies to what we're talking about in artificial intelligence. So for those who don't know, AI is essentially the ability of machines to simulate intelligent behavior in humans. The ability for us to be able to take human intelligence and then transfer it to machines, either the way we speak, the way we can read, the way we can hear, the way we can move around and all of those things. And Technology has moved so, so fast that this area of computing is taking the shine right now. Like, a lot of people are learning how to ensure that they can program intelligence of humans into cars, into computers, into mobile phones, into air conditioners, into fridges, into everything. And it's creating a massive opportunity for jobs. So, talking about accessing global communities, talking about accessing global opportunities for your business, it is very crucial to know how AI allows you to do this. So that, that's like the fear everybody has. So for techies, they probably understand this thing. They understand where they come to create those intelligent systems. But for the average man that is probably selling products, the trader, it feels this thing has come to wipe out my life. Mm -hmm. I fight this. Instead of learning it, I want to fight it. Um, that's where I want you to. I mean, to sound a little philosophical, one of the best things any human should think about when you think about change is how to ride on change. So change is happening, all these things are happening, new technologies are coming on. As a business person who is not a techie, uh, even though Steve Jobs says that every human should learn how to code because it allows you to think in a certain way and at least you understand logic, okay? But if you are somebody who doesn't want to invest that much time into understanding how, you know, what lines of code work within this particular system to work, why don't you do everything to acquire technology? So first, do a needs assessment. Find out which part of your business or work requires this kind of technology right now. Which part of your business requires artificial intelligence? Do you want to be able to read minds and know what your customers are thinking about? Yeah. Do you want to gather new powers to predict where the market is going to? Then you need artificial intelligence. You need recommender systems to be able to tell your clients what they should be buying from you. You need to be able to tell where the next level of resource or uh, 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 the next level of profit is going to come from. What are people going to buy in the next 10 years? If you have historical data, you can actually predict that. So essentially what I advise business owners to do is to conduct a needs assessment. Are we trying to make more profit? Are we trying to do our business better? Are we trying to optimize? Are we trying to create better reach? We want to talk to the world more. We want to get more people around the world to know about the businesses we have. Are we trying to do research better? Are we, going to, are we trying to go deeper in this problem solving? When you conduct that needs assessment, usually with an analyst, 
this analyst tells you these are the areas you can apply artificial intelligence. Then as a business person, you think about oh, at what cost will this come to my business? And comparing the cost to the reward, am I ready for this right now? The amazing thing is there are lots of tools online right now that don't require such a big investment. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, several existing you know, platforms and software are building AI capabilities into their software. So you can see uh, a regular Android phone that can do image recognition and recognize its owner, right? That's artificial intelligence. Computer vision programmed into that $200 device, right? So the same way, you might want to say, we want to set up a couple of cameras within our store if I run a boutique. So I'm a fashion entrepreneur. I have nothing to do with building new software, right? I can buy a set of intelligent cameras that can tell how many people come into my store you know, all year round, that can tell me how many people came back to buy, mm -hmm. how many people returned with bags in their hands that they've actually bought, and how many people came to window shop, power. and I know they are buying power. So I'm able to use all of that data, put it together to determine where else we need to put stores around. There's a company in the UK called We See Through. Now, We See Through basically uses video analytics to generate, to, to identify which products people are buying. So they, they put camera, they mount cameras in different stores. And as you know, United Kingdom is one of the most you know, uh, watched countries in the world, like <laughs> surveillance is everywhere. So they put these cameras in, in big stores to basically determine what brands people are buying. So these cameras are intelligent enough, not just to create a video footage like a CCTV camera, but to be able to analyze that video and tell how many times they saw the logo of a certain product. The same way you might want to deploy those kind of solutions within your own store to see how many more products, how many kind of products are people actually buying and how warm are they. Now, this computer vision software can actually read massive amount of like expressions in the face of people, millions of expressions, and be able to analyze sentiment, whether they express anxiety, fear, joy, sadness, anger, or any of these things. So there are lots of ways, and it's really about you and I deciding how we want to go about this. You can actually encourage more customers to come to your store by deploying a customer service robot that basically just answers questions and ensures that your, your, your employees can focus on more important things. And there are lots of conversations about how many jobs this is going to take away. So we say, if you want to think about how many jobs this will take away, you should also think about how many jobs it will create. The most recent report by the World Economic Forum says that there's going to be about 33 million jobs lost between now and 2025. But there's going to be 133 million more jobs created by the year 2025. You know, that's one of their most recent reports. And it's amazing because if we don't begin to think about it in that way, we'll be looking at the odds. We'll be looking at the, the evil rather than thinking about what more things can this create? How much more wealth can it, can it provide? How many diseases can it cure? How much, how can it make our lives easy in terms of traffic and in terms of traffic prediction and in terms of driverless cars? How can it make our life easy in terms of, you know, determining, you know, more accurately areas where you should treat when you're treating a cancer, for example. You know, so artificial intelligence has come to stay. It's a change we can't do anything about other than prepare for yeah. and do all we can to get ready, either to be people who will create that technology or to be people who will use that technology to the best possible potential. So some of the um, viewers online right now are just young people, mostly students, that uh, they love this AI, AI talk. But there's also this fear of, they've heard a lot about mathematics. <laughs> and I'm not a mathematician, I'm mm -hmm. a social science student mm -hmm. and all of that. And I tell them, I say, look, the tech world doesn't actually totally, totally care about your background in Absolutely. school. So how do you encourage this guy? You are doing a lot of work around teaching a lot of young yeah. people AI and data science. So what's like the encouraging factor? Yeah. Other, the fa other than the true fact that this is taking over the world yeah. and we all have to jump on the train. That's right. So other than that, which I mean cannot be overemphasized, what's, what's is that motivating factor? What is that thing? What's that? I mean, you've trained over a thousand people mm -hmm. in this technology. For an average African, what should be the juice yeah. to say, I want to jump on this? Essentially, I tell people there is no artificial intelligence without the experts. So uh, for every artificial intelligence system, you know, you essentially need a domain expert. Domain expertise is important to be able to gather the premise, the ground truth, the knowledge that is required for the AI to then begin to perform. So essentially, if we're building an AI that can basically argue in court, then we need the best lawyer exactly. to be able to train. If we actually need you know, to create uh, an artificial intelligence that would show us 
you know, out and about maneuver traffic, and we essentially need someone who understands urban and regional planning. So regardless of your field, you have a role to play in artificial intelligence, either in creating the body of knowledge that would help AI to get better, or in determining the ethics and guidelines. We have people who need to go into advocacy of artificial intelligence. When we say this, we create 130 million jobs. We're not saying it to create 130 million programmers. We're saying that even if you're a social scientist, there is a role to play between understanding yeah. human-computer interaction. How, how do we grow? I mean, when you look at anthropology and ontology and taxonomies, all of these things are things we are trying to build into machines. So essentially, regardless of your field, what you need to know is, how do I come in? What's my role? What, what role do I need to play? And you need to have the basic knowledge first. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get as many people who are laymen to get into understanding what artificial intelligence is. And when they get there, they can determine what pathways they want to take because there are a variety of pathways. You can be an architect, you know, just designing systems that are AI systems without writing a single line of code. And some other person who enjoys being alone, enjoys, you know, having their personal time, you know, likes to think logically, ask questions about everything, they are more fit for like the coding role and they can take advantage of that. Yeah. But as a person, Having your domain expertise is the, is the first level of things. Do you even know what you went to study in the university very well? And how can you help us to document this knowledge, create the ground truth, support a system to learn how to do these things, and repeat the process all over again? Exactly. Thank you, Shola, for it's joining us. It's been a pleasure to be here. I am particularly excited about the work that you are doing, and I look forward to how much more we can do together. All right. <laughs> you might want to ask Shola questions. You could follow him on Instagram. Olu Shola Amoson. Right. Absolutely. And it's going to be right there below this video yeah. right now. Olu Shola Amoson. Thank you. You read a lot from Olu Shola Amoson around artificial intelligence. I mean, you could think it's such a big word, such a big technology that you could you cannot apply to your sales of shoes online, to your jewelry sales, to your making of clay pots, or to your sales of art collections. But then, there are the amazing brands using AI no matter how little like you said there are thousands of ai solutions that you could deploy free of charge for your business or for whatever part you're in um there is this uh, chinese restaurant called kui chinese they use ai to know where to push their advert to what billboard to put their advert on and then they get a lot of customers people say ah uh, yeah it's chinese food it's too expensive and all of that probably should not sell it in this part of the world but they are having amazing sales because they know where to advertise to. They don't just advertise anywhere, right? So we've been able to stress the fact that whatever thing you, you like doing, first, there's so many things that we like doing. Now, whatever thing you like doing, whatever thing you are doing right now, either you like it or you don't like it, you need to move from the facts. You need to move from the point of working like a machine. That is, you're just doing everything they ask you to do. You wake up in the morning, you fill the form, you file it, to understanding the industry, knowing the background of how big that industry is and where the industry is going right now so that you could fit your passion, your interest in the right space. That is what we've been able to address in volume one. In volume two, which is um, the next phase of Global Human Series, the date will be released soon and I would like you to be a part of it, is how you take this to the next point. How you take this to the point of making a lot of money off this, right? I have helped a lot of people, the amazing talents, like I told you, I'm the global talent lead for 1.5 Garage. The amazing talents working out of Africa right now, and they are getting paid on skills like UI, UX, Flutter. They are getting paid on artificial intelligence and PHP. A lot of money. I have 22 year olds working with me that make as high as 300,000 Naira a week. That is around $900. A week working from home, paying taxes, able to do amazing things, investing in agriculture because agriculture is also one of the things that will produce the next phase of billionaires. No matter how machines take over the world, no matter how we all get involved in creating that intelligent system, everybody still needs to eat. <laughs> so if you are doing anything around feeding, feeding people, getting people food, yes, you are in the right space. But then that space is also going to change. So how are you going to be part of the change? Simple, understand, be ready to research. Don't get all locked up in your environment. I live in Ibadan, I live in Lagos, I live in Accra, or oh, I live in Johannesburg. Understand that it is a global turnover. 
So it's not just going to eat the city of New York or Berlin in Germany. It's going to come down <laughs> to Africa. It's going to eat everywhere and now we do things. Now, one of the uh, last things I would like to say before I see you in volume two is we have to understand that there are so many choices that we didn't make by ourselves that was made for us. One choice that we didn't make for ourselves is our name. A lot of us had not changed the names we've been given. It's fine. One of the choices we also didn't make for ourselves is the language we speak, right? So if you were born in this part of the world right now, if you're born in Nigeria, you'll be speaking English and probably Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa. If you were born in Kenya, you'll be speaking Swahili. If you are born in Ghana, you'll probably be speaking three and also English. Now, being the global human, I understand that machines can machines have been built <laughs> i mean mixed reality was launched by uh, microsoft recently a mixed reality feature where somebody was giving a presentation in english and the exact hologram <laughs> the exact picture of that person was interpreting in japanese right but when we are first humans before we are anything else it means when i go to germany i'm going to relate to people and then i'm going to need people at different strategic points in my life to be anything i want to be so it would be good to pick up a second language you don't need to be a pro at it but when it is it is a connecting factor all over the world language and food when i walk into nairobi and then i speak the little swahili i know i say karibu i say asante i say sawa sawa oh there's a all factor like whoa you're nigerian you could speak that and then i make a lot of friends when they give me their food and i eat it with joy so when i travel and then I, I know I had a lot of problems the last time I was in South Africa with their food. And I'm like, do people eat this? Once I say, when I, once I hear yes, then I eat it. It's the connecting factor. Why? You have to expand your mind to work with teams globally. You're going to be working with people that you will not meet. You, you will work on your PC, you work on your phone in teams with people that you will never meet in five years. And you just want to understand them. You want to have that human relationship first before you can achieve anything. Thank you for being part of this webcast. I'm looking forward to seeing you in volume two. Yeah, we'll actually be turning this to like a lot of cash um place amazing, amazing talent on jobs introduce you to markets see that skill that you're doing i'm starting a mentorship program and then a lot of you who want to be part of it see that skill that you have right now how we could refine it a little bit and sell you to the global market get enough remuneration in cash for what you do get to meet a lot of people travel all over the world that you are born in your country your town doesn't mean you should stay there all your life and die the amazing things you could do with other people that have like minds around the world thank you thank you thank you for being part of this webcast um remember to share the link with your friends too i mean a lot of people would would gain a lot watching this i'll see you in volume two my name is keaton david